And let's begin today's webinar, The Top 10 Reasons Insurance Firms Choose DocuSign. Today's speakers are Mike Fiasconi, Enterprise Account Executive at DocuSign. Mike is the team lead for DocuSign's strategic insurance practice. For the past four years, he has been working with the top 15 insurance carriers in the U.S. to help take their business digital across sales, service, claims, and internal processes. He has more than 15 years of enterprise software sales and consulting experience. Prior to DocuSign, he was with Oracle Corporation in their enterprise applications group, working with Fortune 500 companies. Mike has experience taking a variety of emerging technologies to market, including Internet security, web hosting, and enterprise cloud software. Also joining us today, we have Alpesh Patel, Vice President and General Manager of Insurance at DocuSign. Alpesh drives DocuSign's go-to-market strategy and execution for our insurance customers. Prior to joining DocuSign, Alpesh was a Vice President of Sales for Strategic Insurance Customers for Salesforce.com. Thank you both so much for joining us. Alpesh, you now have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon or good morning wherever you are everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar and spending next hour with us. We are excited uh, about our opportunity in this space and uh, we're glad that you are spending time with us. I wanted to quickly first cover with you our uh, agenda for today and uh, share with you just an overview of how DocuSign as a company we are looking at the insurance industry and opportunity to partner with our customers. That will be followed by a quick demonstration of DocuSign technology to get everybody a quick overview. And uh, that will be followed by Mike Fiosconi who will cover the top 10 reasons on why insurance companies choose us. Uh, that will be followed by a quick summary and uh, Q&As. Uh, so we welcome your questions and comments. With that, let me first uh, start with providing you a quick overview. So when we look at insurance industry, there is, we believe there is a tremendous opportunity for us jointly to make a significant impact on a customer experience, on implementing compliance, and gaining return on investment on all aspects of insurance business. Insurance is uh, almost $2 trillion per year revenue industry. And this industry primarily runs on paper, and there is a great opportunity for us to make an impact. And we are very excited about that. But to make that impact, it requires us to have a holistic approach uh, to address many challenges that we are facing. So if you look at the insurance industry, the top three consumers for these industries are the, top, the insurance carriers, agents or brokers that distribute the products, and the end consumers. We are honored to be in a state where we have a great penetration and adoption in all of these three areas. Now when it comes to top carriers, 13 of the top 15 carriers are using DocuSign today. Over 20,000 uh, independent and captive agents of insurance companies are using DocuSign today, and over 50 million consumers are using that. So having that penetration within all three components of the insurance industry gives us a great foundation to get great feedback from all of these users and continue to improve and support our customers. But along with that, to make a change that we are striving to make about getting insurance companies to be totally digital in their core business processes, we also recognize that's a work that would require more than what DocuSign can offer. And we want to be the catalyst in this change. As a reason, we are partnering with major technology partners like Salesforce.com, SAP, Microsoft, also insurance-specific technology partners like Vertifor, HP Extreme, Guidewires, and others. Along with that, we are working with the major SIs that drive strategy and implementation uh, within these carriers, uh, many different associations, that uh, independent agents and other agents are part of that to, uh, to educate and uh, create awareness along with uh, uh, driving adoption. Uh, we're also working with a number, number, number of regulatory bodies to make sure that any hurdles around the legal compliance or acceptance are dissolved. 
Along with that, we are also working with some of the top in industry experts to create a standard. So this becomes a common way of doing business in insurance and other industries that are regulated going forward. So that's uh, part of our effort to lead a, a XDPM standard. And we are doing all of this on a global trust network where as a company we have spent uh, million, $100 million plus and we will continue to invest to build a secure global trust network. So that's overall view on how we look at insurance industry and focus on uh, creating a foundation for our long-term success because we truly believe that there is a great opportunity for collectively all of us to impact customer experience, really improve uh, compliance, and gain return on investment very quickly because of the inefficiencies we can, uh, uh, we can remove. So it's a great opportunity for us to work together. We are in this journey, and we know it's going to be a long journey, but there is a great opportunity and a potential for us, all of us. So that's a quick summary of where we are heading as a, uh, as a company on this insurance industry. And uh, I will hand it over to Mike Fiosconi to provide you a quick, uh, a quick demonstration of our product along with top 10 reasons on why insurance companies pick us. With that, Mike, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Alpesh. Appreciate it. Hi, everybody. This is Mike Fiasconi. Uh, we're going to start with a quick poll. poll. We're curious, does your organization currently use electronic signatures? So just go ahead and click yes or no or not sure. Submit your results, and uh, we'll see what, the, what comes back. So uh, a lot of people responding. Uh, we'll show the results in a minute. Uh, okay. This looks great. So more than half are using electronic signatures today, uh, <clears throat> but it's almost split half and half. So that's pretty, um, pretty interesting information. It's probably accurate what we see overall. Um, but uh, we're seeing a tremendous shift in the past three years. In fact, the number of users that joined our network doubled year over year. Uh, for the past three years. So it's an interesting time. So great. Thanks for participating in that poll. Uh, I thought we would just start with a demonstration because many people, uh, half people um, may have not seen this. So what I'd like to show you is from a signer perspective how this looks. They would get an email. An email would come to them. It would be branded either by the agents, uh, agency branding or carrier branding, uh, however you want to brand that. Uh, it's an email with a review document link, and so you click on this button and the web browser will pop up and it will take them inside of an electronic envelope. And first thing the consumer needs to do is agree to do business electronically. And when they do that, they can see the document inside the envelope. They can scroll. There are thumbnails that they can click on if they wanted to. Um, and, or they can click this little Next button, which takes them exactly to where they need to enter in data. And the date, so not only is DocuSign used for capturing signatures, but also for capturing data. Some of the data you may know about the policyholder, some of the data you don't know. For example, at the time of signing, it's time for me to put the name of the beneficiary. So the red fields are required, and the gray fields are optional, <coughs> and you can enter in data, and you click your way through, and then it's time to sign. So by signing, just like in Paper World, there's a little sticky tag. I click on that, and then I choose a signature style that I like, that I resonate with. I can uh, just pick a style. You know, this one looks good. I could um, choose a different one. It doesn't matter what it looks like because what you're saying is that it's an electronic representation of my signature. It's just the same as pen and paper. And so I can go ahead and adopt that. If I wanted to draw the signature, I could certainly draw it. It's just really odd with a mouse. So <laughs> what we do on a mobile device, when I open this on a mobile device, we will have the, the recipient draw by default. In this case, I'm just going to choose this one and the place is on there and the date sign is automatically there. And then the Finish button appears. The Finish button won't appear until all the data is completed and all the signatures are done. 
So that helps with the not in good order rate. We make sure everything's done appropriately, everything's in good order before they can complete. So now that um, now that uh, Fred has finished signing it, there is uh, a second signer. Fred was the policyholder. There's a second signer that also needs to sign it, and that's the agent. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and just share my uh, phone here, my mobile phone, and the agent gets an email. And we've optimized the email to look great on a mobile device. The agent clicks Review Document. Browser opens up on the uh, mobile device. The agent sees, uh, you know, agrees to do business electronically, reviews document, things you can do on a mobile device, pinch, zoom, move around, all of that works, DocuSign. There's no software needed. Um, I could see where you know, the policyholder signed, and then I can also sign myself. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get to the signature block, tap the Sign button. Now Fred is an agent. Fred has a DocuSign account. Fred does not have to adopt his signature. That's already stored in his profile. Only people that need to adopt the signature is people that don't have an account, and this is the first time DocuSigning. So Fred signs. He's finished. It's done. It's been routed. Operations, uh, processing, everybody has a copy at this point. So that's how easy it is to sign a document. Now if we go back, if we go into what's called the web console, this is what the sender would look like. Sender needs to prepare an envelope. And that, that's the term that we use is an elect electronic envelope. So what I'll do is upload a file. I'm going to upload the life application into DocuSign. DocuSign is going to read this document upon upload. And if it's seen the document before and there's a template, it will say, would you like to apply the template? Yeah, I would like to apply a template. Well, which one? I have this life insurance template. That means it's going to pre-tag the document for signature and put some placeholders for the uh, recipients. So I want John to sign. I want uh, Fred to sign. Uh, I want to sign an order. So first John's going to get the invitation. Then Fred's going to get the information. This is the subject of the email. This is the message of the email. I'm going to go click Next. You see these tags are already on top of the document. <clears throat> That's because they are part of a template. But how do those tags get there? Well, I could just say I want John to initial uh, right here. I drag a little initial tag there. If I want Fred to, in addition to signing, maybe he also needs initial somewhere. Or maybe he wants to put uh, uh, a text. He wants to fill in comments over here. You just drag these things on top of the document, and that's how they get there. And when you drag them on there, and you can save it, then you can use it as a template going forward. So that's how these tags get on there. I'm going to go ahead and send that off, and then it's done. And then it's in process. It's in flight. You can see that this envelope is waiting for John and Fred to sign. This one was the one we just did. It was completed. John signed at this date. Fred signed on this date. If I want more information, I can go into the history. There's a unique document ID of every transaction. You can see when the envelope was registered, when it was sent, when John viewed it, John's IP address. So this is a nice artifact, nice uh, compliance trail of every step in the way uh, of, of the process, when Fred viewed it, when he signed it, so everything. Now you have visibility when they viewed it, signed it, declined it, when they printed a copy, so it's a great visibility into the process. And of course there are a number of reports that you can view, whether it's how quickly these things are coming back, or which your completion rate, which ones are out for signature. Everything is available in your web console. So that's how the product works. Now that you know that, um, I'd like to just move to the next question. Do you have an initiative to go digital within your organization? Please answer yes or no. We'll see what the poll results, results are. Is this something that's one of the things you're planning on doing in the next 12 to 24 months? Okay, I'll go ahead and close it. And wow, overwhelmingly everybody has initiative to go digital, and uh, that makes sense. You know, mobile is driving that. Consumers are driving that. So. 
this is an exciting time. Now, why do customers in the insurance group choose uh, DocuSign? Well, we've asked our customers. Uh, we pull them and we say, you know, we appreciate the partnership, but why did you choose us? And everybody had their kind of top one or two or three, whether it was security or availability, whether it was ease of use or just the trust of DocuSign. Everyone kind of had their own reason. So as far as the first is concerned, standard and insurance, we're very fortunate because we are so focused in the insurance space. Everyone at DocuSign uh, in the insurance practice is uh, aligned with strategic insurance. That means our product management, our account management, our marketing, our sales team, our support team. Um, we have industry experts. And uh, today, you know, carriers of all different sizes, regional carriers, national carriers, uh, ha are standardizing on DocuSign. Also, the big I has endorsed DocuSign to the independent agents. So agents are signing up for DocuSign individually through our website. Carriers are signing up st strategic partnerships with us. Uh, Nationwide is a great example. They deploy DocuSign integrated nationwide.com, customer facing if you're signing up for a new policy, or if you're submitting a claim, or you're calling a call center. You all have a seamless digital transaction management approach. Uh, they went live with their first use case in a couple months and um, are, have been deploying out for a couple years, and uh, great success there. <laughs> Safeco did something interesting. They integrated to the DocuSign platform so that independent agents could bring their own DocuSign account to the quote and issue site, uh, agent facing quote and issue, agent portal, and seamlessly uh, upload documents to, to their DocuSign account pre-tagged and ready to go. So uh, carriers really want this to be as easy as possible for agents to use. Agents want to use it for their customers, and we are the standard. Nobody has more insurance customers than, than DocuSign. So the second one uh, is the easiest to use. Um, you already saw the demo, so I'm going to skip over number two. I think you see how easy it is to use, but that is a key factor in how we make this viral is that with very little training you can get up and running. Another thing to think about is our partner ecosystem. And so when you think of partners, there are many different types. There are consulting partners that have built DocuSign practice, uh, Accenture, their digital practice has uh, a DocuSign component to it. Um, we've got uh, a lot of technology partnerships uh, so that it could be just part of your current business flow. If you're using an agency management system like Vertifor, then you never even have to leave that. You can just through an integration, through a partnership, you can click a drop-down menu, send it for signature using DocuSign. If you want those documents to come back and be stored into a file repository, then you can have, use DocuPace and we have an integration to have those stored automatically in DocuPace. So we look at the entire ecosystem of insurance to figure out how we can blend into current systems, current processes, and partners to kind of help that uh, make it as easy as possible for our customers. And because we've been focusing on the insurance for so long, we've come up with a number of features that are unique to the insurance segment. Signer attachments, uh, we were the first company to come out with this capability about four years ago, and we designed this so that policyholders could attach trailing documents to an application. If they needed to attach uh, proof of prior insurance or a student grade card to get a particular discount, uh, in addition to signing documents, they can upload supporting documents during the under, for the underwriting process. Uh, that's one example. Multiple brands. Maybe you have a distribution or a, a brand where you're supporting an independent channel. Maybe you have a brand for an exclusive channel. Maybe you have a brand for a direct. Uh, maybe you, know, you have different agencies. A DocuSign allows for different brands for different types of businesses. Um, document visibility. Uh, maybe there are some medical documents that need to go to the insured, but uh, you know, they can't go to a second party. You can't see those, those medical documents. Or maybe the physician needs to fill out a particular document for a claim. But 
shouldn't be seeing certain other policy documents that the policyholder. So we, we have the ability to show the right documents to the right people at the right time. So a lot of features specifically designed for the insurance industry, including our API for integrations. A big one is number five, our security. Uh, obviously this is a highly regulated space. We're talking about non-public information in the cloud. We're talking about um, you know, uh, highly sensitive uh, transactions. And um, you, we've got banks using DocuSign, wealth management firms using DocuSign to open up new financial accounts, and insurance is in that same boat. So uh, all the certifications on the right are pretty important. I'd say the ISO 27001 certification is the gold standard for security. And we've had that certification for uh, three years and longer than and anybody else. It's not easy to have that certification. You have to reapply for it every year. It goes into the technology, to the operations, to our hiring practices, everything, how we document, how we lock down, even how clean people keep their desks in our company. We have to monitor and track. So we're pretty proud of that. We're also very proud of the uh, security appliance, and that's first to market. That's the best of both worlds where you get to use a cloud service like DocuSign, but you can, you, on your premise at the customer site, they hold the keys. The keys are used to uh, decrypt the transactions. So there's absolutely no way anybody could see the contents of the envelope unless you have that decryption key. And we have a security appliance that allows our customers to hold the keys on their premise. And so that just brings the level of access and security to a whole, a, whole different, uh, a whole different level. So security, huge. The other thing is you know, we are by far the leader in consumer transactions. We have millions of downloads of our app on iPhone and Android, uh, Windows. And uh, consumers, if they've done any real estate transaction in the past five years, then uh, eight out of ten times they have DocuSigned on their house, on the paperwork, when they applied for their loans, uh, when they sign up for cable, uh, television, or Internet service. Cox uh, is a big customer. Comcast is a customer of DocuSign. Uh, even school permission slips. So there are uh, a lot of different touch points that consumers are using DocuSign in their daily life, whether it's work or personal. There's 60 million people on the network now, and they trust it, and they just trust the brand, and they're familiar with the process. Mobile is absolutely huge. Uh, in 2012, 12% uh, of our users came in on mobile. Uh, in 2013, we were at 25%. Uh, 2014, 50%. So we've d d mobile has doubled. We're now at about 80, 75% of all of the uh, interactions and signers are now through mobile. So uh, because of that, we've uh, isolated an entire development team to mobile. It's uh, a huge team now working on all the different platforms, whether it's a uh, mobile friendly web experience or a native app experience, or it's part uh, blended within a, a Microsoft Office 365. Uh, everything has been optimized for mobile. So that level of innovation you always get with DocuSign. And we've won some great awards. In 2012 when we launched the first DocuSign app, uh, it was ranked the top five business app of all time in, in, for 2012. Uh, so we're very excited about that distinction. Apple has since become a customer and a strategic partner of DocuSign. So uh, mobile is the way to go. We are ahead of the curve. Um, APIs, what are APIs? They're application program interfaces. This is a fancy word by saying we've got um, the ability for customers to call DocuSign through programming, through language, standard web services, uh, the SOAP or REST they're called, but your IT staff knows that these are standard in the industry. And our entire platform has been opened up through APIs. Why is that important? Well, 
because uh, basically DocuSign can become a button in any application, any software system that you're in. So think about it. When you're in a policy administration system, when you're in an HR system, a procurement system, a claims system, whatever system you're, where the data resides, and you would normally hit a print button or email button to email something out. Instead of doing that, you click a different button, and that button calls DocuSign. So this is the new print button. Click that button, it will call the API, it will send the documents to us, it will tell us what recipients it needs to go to, what order, where to sign, what they need to do. We will take care of the rest. And we've got an, a great library of uh, an API toolkit. We have got a development center. We have uh, almost 10,000 active developers. We have a mobile uh, SDK kit so you can blend aspects of DocuSign in your own mobile apps. And we have a great support system around it. And that's really important to insurance customers because they want this to be super easy for their customers to use. They just want it to be a natural part of their process and APIs are the magic sauce that make that happen. And we've won all kinds of awards for that. So it's not as hard as people think. That's the biggest comment we get is, oh wow, I mean, I only need to send three or four lines of code and I can implement this in my system. This is great. The, la the set next one, number nine, carrier grade architecture and operations. So, we know that these are mission critical transactions. We have customers all over the world. We know that any kind of downtime will kill the business. So as a result, a company uh, of DocuSign size made a very significant investment to upgrade the architecture so that we have fault tolerant redundant sites and zero scheduled downtime. So even when DocuSign comes up with their next release, every quarter we have a new release, even when we re, uh, do that, there's no scheduled downtime. We're able to take down aspects of our architecture and our network, upgrade them, put them back on, and seamlessly divert traffic. So that means if there's a particular outage, if there's a catastrophe, we have the ability to uh, reroute traffic and our, our goal is to have five nines of availability. That's our internal uh, SLA that we strive for. So that's uh, better than best in class. That's at a whole different level that you know, har hardly any other customers, not even Salesforce.com has an architecture that's built to this degree. So uh, insurance p uh, carriers and customers and agents care about uptime and performance, and that's a key component to why customers choose DocuSign. And then the last piece is that uh, we're just the standard. You know, we've been highlighted by a number of third parties uh, being the leader in this space. We have 71% uh, market share. And again, when you're trusting your customer transactions, you want to make sure that you're aligned with a brand that they already trust and it's been validated by the market. So uh, our ranking is just a testament to our experience in this area and our, our focus uh, in the insurance industry. So just to kind of wrap things up from a conclusion perspective, uh, DocuSign is focused on the entire ecosystem in the insurance industry from carriers, to uh, distribution channels, agents, consumers, the technology partners that are in this space, the consulting partners, uh, the security and compliance, uh, everybody, even with the regulatory bodies, uh, we are really looking at this thing holistically and, and we need your help. We, we can't do this alone. We need you guys to help us champion the digital cause. So if there are some obstacles, uh, hurdles, or questions, uh, we're prepared to respond to that. We have a chief policy officer by the name of Ken Moyle that 
often goes out and gives talks on e-signature legality and acceptance, and he's the chairman of the Ezra Committee, which is the Electronic Signatures and Records Association. And so we are really hyper-focused on you know, driving adoption of these digital transactions. Another conclusion point is just the level of security and availability help uh, with the trust, the, the, the trust factor, which is you know, super important in the insurance industry. And, and the last point is that uh, we hear this a lot from our insurance customers. Uh, they trust DocuSign to assume the risk of the transaction. They prefer to have a third party who is agnostic to manage the transaction and ensure that it conforms with the Federal E-Sign Act and the state UEDA laws and the security, and they just would rather outsource the risk of that transaction to, uh, to DocuSign. And uh, that way if there is any challenge in court or any arbitration, you can always point to DocuSign, a neutral third party, get a copy of the document, a copy of the certificate of completion, the history tra uh, audit trail, all the artifacts, and, and people trust that. And it has gone to court a number of times. And in every case, it's uh, been dismissed because of the artifacts and the proof that we provide. So if you, if you have questions and you want to know more information, this is our contact our phone number, email, visit our website, uh, and we do have time today to also answer your questions online. So at this point I hand it over to you, Alyssa. Great. Thank you so much for that presentation. As Mike mentioned, we will now answer a few questions from the audience. As a reminder, you may submit questions through the Q&A function located in the lower left side of your console. Simply type your question into the field and click Send. I see that some questions have already come in, so let's start with this one. What are the primary use cases where DocuSign is being used in insurance? I'll take that. Yeah, so primary, it's interesting. Some people start, I would say the number one area would be new policy new applications, if it's a life application, uh, if it's an auto application, if you're, there's an uninsured motorist or a coverage rejection form that's needed, that's very common. Anything to get business in faster would be number one. And then a tie for number two would be the servicing of those policies and claims. So those are the big three. It's ser sales, service, and claims. As you can imagine with policies, a lot of different servicing options, name changes, beneficiary changes, bank account changes, so they all need sign off. And then, uh, and then claims. You know, claims is a, uh, really rapidly becoming our top use case this year as uh, carriers look to digitize that claims process, make it faster, easier, and close the claim more quickly. So those are the top three. And then in addition to the customer facing use cases, there are a number of internal use cases that people use DocuSign for when they're buying something uh, when in procurement, when they're hiring someone uh, in HR, when there's any internal process that needs acknowledged and signed off is a use case. So there's a number of internal you know, operational type use cases, but that's secondary to customer facing transactions. Great. Here's another question. Is there an admin console to manage agency licenses and monitor staff usage? Absolutely. So uh, there are different profile types set up in the account. There's an administrator. Administrator has full visibility and also has access to the configuration and branding and settings and templates and you know all of that stuff. Our admin training is about a half day training program. And then the admin would set up the users in the account, the agents, what visibility, what access do they have? Uh, can they just send things? Can they make edits? Are they just there to view? Uh, so the admin really is set up to, to manage that themselves. Fabulous. Here's another question. Do direct writers with high market share like Geico and Progressive use DocuSign or something similar for apps? Yeah, direct writers. Okay, great. Go ahead, Elvis. 
So I mean, I think for when it comes to using a specific name, uh, or some of our carriers have asked us not to use the name, and we respect that. So we can't comment on a specific carrier names. But if you look at uh, the total population, 13 of the top 15 carriers are using a DocuSign customers. So that's probably the best way for us to answer the question. Uh, but uh, I'll just comment by saying, y y yes, all of the major carriers are using DocuSign in some degree. Uh, some have started in sales and moving cross service and claims. Some have started in claims and moving into sales and service. But everybody, uh, all the you know, the, even the, you know, large carriers are, are using DocuSign in, in one of those areas or all. Great. Thanks for that comment, Mike. Here's another question: Does DocuSign integrate with other insurance systems, for example, Vertifor and Applied? Yeah, Vertifor has an exclusive uh, partnership agreement with DocuSign, and so we are part of the Vertifor AMS 360, their latest version. Uh, there's a native integration. Applied has uh, also we've also done integrations with Applied. We don't have a formal partnership like we do with Vertifor, but uh, again, because we've made the APIs so uh, simple and available that uh, any of these systems can connect to DocuSign. But we have a pre-built integration ready to go shipped through Vertifor. Excellent. Here's another question. Um, this attendee would like to know how DocuSign can address if the regulator requires the hard copies to be maintained. Uh, so during the when the recipient uh, is co is connected to the electronic transaction, when they're inside the envelope, uh, there's always an option to download and print the documents. So DocuSign becomes a secure delivery mechanism, and you can add carbon copy recipients to the workflow so that once the transaction is complete, an email will be sent to whatever party you'd like, whatever regulators you'd like. And they would have the option to click the link to open up the browser and download a copy of the document. Anybody can download copies, print them off, and store them. And the nice part about using DocuSign for that is that that becomes an audited, a trackable item. You can track that they viewed it and downloaded it. So certainly we allow people to print um, and uh, you know, store these files wherever they'd like. Fantastic. Here's another question. How can DocuSign help prepare a business case or cost-benefit analysis to get approval to implement DocuSign? Yeah, we've worked with a number of um, different carriers and agencies on their current process of preparing documents, sending them out, the cost of mail, the cost of postage, cost of paper, the uh, time it takes to follow up and get these signatures, and um, what percentage of documents come back that are not in good order that need reworked? What's, uh, what type of closure rate do you have? And so we have done a number, um, we've done several hundred value assessments, and uh, we have a third party that we pull in um, to, to run these value assessments for our customers. And be, because of that, we've created a library of data points that are now um, interesting stats around uh, average per document savings by going digital. So we have a library of data we can provide as an outside in point of view, uh, but we also have the ability to do what we call an inside out point of view value assessment where we actually look at your current process and kind of a model for that. But on average, the, um, the savings per document is about $16 per document, but that varies depending on the use case. We've seen some several hundred dollars of savings per document, and we've some, seen some around you know, seven or eight dollars per document. But uh, regardless, the, <laughs> the value is pretty insane. It's about a two to three month payback period on average. Wow. All right. It looks like we do have time for just one more question. And we'll go with this one. What is the pricing model for DocuSign? It's a subscription, so you sign up to use DocuSign. And we care about a couple things. We care about the number of people that 
would need access to the web console or the number of people that would be sending documents out for signature or will be administering the account. So those are sender, those are seats. So we, we care about how many seats are needed. Only people that need seats are the ones sending them out for signature. We also care about the number of transactions that are done on an annual basis. So we take those two data points, seats and transactions, to provide um, a proposal that allows you to use our platform you know, up to a certain number of transactions or up to a certain number of, of seats. Excellent. And unfortunately, that is all the time we have for questions. For those of you with questions we have not addressed, please email them to webinar at docusign.com, and we'll be happy to follow up with you after today's presentation. In closing, I would like to thank Mike Fiasconi, Alpesh Patel, and each of you for attending today. We will be sending you a follow-up email after this presentation with contact information as well as a link to the recorded webinar. If you have any questions in the future, please send an email to webinar at docusign.com. Again, thank you so much for participating and have a great remainder of the day.